You know what? Excellence is what you want. And excellence is what you get. How are you living? What are you giving? If excellence is what you see, then excellent is who you be. What are you pursuing? It's all up to you when. When you come. Hello, beloved. Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome. Dr. Catherine E. James here bringing you For the Love of It, a weekly television show designed to add more love into the world, one episode at a time. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing your time with me, whether you're watching live or you're watching the replay. I greatly appreciate you. I love engagement, absolutely love it. If you follow me on social media, you'll see that I'm on every Monday through Friday from 5.40 to 6 a.m. on Facebook Live, Facebook Live. So we actually get to engage at 5.40 in the morning, believe it or not, if you're up that early. But even if you're not, you can watch that replay as well. So, um, I encourage you to call in. I encourage you to call in during the show. Call in earlier than later so we can get your question in. Doesn't matter what the question is about. If I can, you know, um, talk about it and engage with you on it, then I certainly will. So the numbers are below. Feel free to call in and let's talk, y'all. Let's just chat. So for the love of it, we'll take on, and it takes on many forms. How about that? It takes on many forms. We just don't ever know what Papa has in store for us. We don't know. Everything, however, will be anchored in Luke 10, 27, which says, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, strength, soul, and mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. As thyself. That last part. That's the part where we park on. That's, the, that's my life's mission. It is that part that I've been put on this earth to promote, to support, to encourage, to promulgate, whatever the word might be, right? So it's my life's intent that every soul would know love and know that they are loved. That every soul, every human, every person would know love with a capital L and know that they are loved. So each conversation that is facilitated, all the tools and strategies we share, the guests we have on the show, and the actions we invite you to take are all intended to lead you to live out Luke 10, 27. All right. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all of thy strength, soul, and mind, and your, and your neighbor as yourself. We're going to park there today for a minute because, you know, self-love for me, self-love self -love is my food. Self-love is my strategy. It's my secret weapon, although it's no secret because I talk about it everywhere I go. It's my methodology. It is my religion, right? It is, <clears throat> it is um, what my papa it's my God-inspired or Papa or God-inspired process. Self-love is. That's, that's the basis of everything that I do. It's the basis of how I show up in the world. It's the basis of everything that I teach so that we might love ourselves better and thereby make the world better. Look, call in. Let's have a conversation about self-love or anything that you like to chat about. Often when I refer to love, I am referring both to the person, Abba God, Elohim, creator of the universe. I am creating both to the person and to the action of love. Often I am talking about both of those. However, today, mostly I am referencing the act of loving. The act of you loving you, boo, of you loving you. So I love me well. I have to. I have to. Like, it's not an option. And I want to. I want to. I am very intentional about me loving me. And so um, in order to have an excess of love to give to you, right? So I love seeing people and... Um, when I see, if I see something about you that really strikes me, I'm going to let you know, right? That, that can encourage you, that can 
bring a smile to your face. That just reminds you that you are an amazing and incredible unique being that does not exist in any other way. It never has and it never will. That alone, that alone warrants that we work to be the best, highest and truest version of ourselves. When we understand that there isn't another one like us in the universe, in the universe, and I say this all the time, but I mean it and I feel it every time that I say it. If we could just get that, if we could just get that idea, that concept, that reality, that truth down, there's so much that we wouldn't struggle with. And there's so many things that we would be able to do um, easier. We would have the motivation to do it. When I realized it's not another one of me in the universe, like it don't matter. Um, you know, it's a song, searched all over, couldn't find nobody, right? But we're talking about God in that, but also that song references us. Still couldn't find nobody, right? Nobody, uh, and the song goes nobody greater, but no one can do you like you do you. No one can. So th that was for free. I just wanted you to get that part. So um, what did I say? So it's from that vantage in which I live my life, from that vantage point, that self-love is my food, my strategy, it's, it's, you know, it's what I do. Um, that which enters my life must pass the test of love. It must pass the test of love. In order to have access to me, it's got to pass the test of love. If it gets to me and doesn't pass the test of love, I was sleeping or slipping a little bit. But you better believe as soon as I come back to myself, right? There was a prophet who said, and I came to myself and I worshipped. Right? I came to myself and I worshipped. As soon as I come back to myself, we're going to put an end to that, whatever that thing is. That's not me loving me. So does, le does love dwell in this is a question. For you, I want you to ask yourself and whatever you're engaged in, whether it's conversation, whether it's something physical, whether it's mental, spiritual, ask yourself the question, does love dwell in this? And if it's a no, uh, what might you need to do? I'm just saying, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's necessary. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is necessary. Does love live here? Does love flourish here? Those are some questions to ask yourself to, to make a decision as to whether or not what you're engaged in is serving you, beloved. Is it serving you well? Is it serving you? If love isn't a part of it, it's not serving you. Um, often when I refer to, um, no, I, so oh, let's see, I've lost my place here. Let me take my glasses off. Okay, so loving me well. So I steadily pour into my cup so that it overflows so that I can serve from my saucer. So I steadily pour into my cup so that it will overflows. So how is it that I love myself well? How is it that I am pouring into myself often? One, so these are some, these are some strategies, some tools, some acts that I offer to you for loving yourself well. Because this is what I do. It's, it's what I teach. So you can get the seminal work, self-love, a gift you give yourself. Um, Papa downloaded this book into me, the chapter titles. As soon as I finished my dissertation, he was like, oh, we're not done. I need you to keep moving, to, to keep pouring from all that you didn't just learned. And so in 2010, I got the, the beginning of the download. Took me a minute to get it published, to work on it. I was, you know, not as disciplined as I needed to be, but 2016 is when it was published. So you can go to Amazon or any of the major outlets and get Self-Love, A Gift You Give Yourself by Dr. Catherine E. James. It is a very pragmatic, bottom line um, book that gives you all kinds of strategies and tools and processes for helping you to self-explore and then discover. So this is the model, self-exploration, self-discovery, self-acceptance self-forgiveness, self-celebration, and self-appreciation. That's the model that you'll get in that book. So how do I love me well? So some more strategies. I give myself endless chances to improve, grow, to learn, and become. I give myself endless chances to improve, grow, learn, and become. Look, so some of y'all might know, some of you might not know. I lost about 105 pounds now. 
about 105 pounds since last June. And in, you better believe in losing that, I was sharing with some somebody sharing online that I have hit 240 about eight times in this process. I've hit 240 about eight times in this process. And this last time I was at 240 was um, on July the 20th. And that time I told myself, I'm done with this. I'm not, I am not going to see 240 ever again in life. I'm done. I am done. Do you hear me? And so I had to talk with myself. I told myself, you done got on my nerves. <laughs> That's a pop pop boo. That is a pop pop. I told, I got on my own nerves. I was just like, girl, what you doing? You done got on my nerves. And so I, I left 240 forever. I am now 213. And we're going on down. The goal is 193. That's the goal. We think anyway. That's what we think the goal is. We and that might be too small, but that's what we're going for. So I give myself endless chances to improve, to grow, to learn, and to become. If I didn't. This journey of 100 pounds release, 100 plus pounds, would have been impossible because it's not a linear journey as no significant growth or accomplishment is. It is not a linear journey. It would have been so much more difficult or challenging than it, than it was. So I give myself chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. I will never stop giving myself chances. Never. I don't care what the outcome is. I don't care what happened, what didn't happen or whatever. I will never give up on myself. I will never. And I, there's a slogan that I stole from the cigarette people as I will never quit quitting. I will never quit quitting the things that don't serve me well. Never, not never. So I will always give myself another chance. I invite you to do the same thing. Always bet on you. Always give yourself another chance. Always try it again, beloved. Because if you don't, we don't get the blessing of you showing up for yourself. Okay. I work on me every day. Every day. I walk two miles every day. And on the weekend, I walk five miles on Saturdays or maybe on Fridays or on Sundays. But I get in at least five miles two days a week. And other than that, I walk two miles every day. So that's my physical body. But I'm all, there is never a time that I'm not working on my mind, literally. Because I am very, very conscientious of what I listen to, of what I talk about, or what I say to myself. So I'm always feeding into me, whether it's the word or prayer or meditation or some 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 podcast but it's always got to be uplifting pragmatic i'm not uh you know i don't live in a utopian world even though i like to be a little bit utopic but you know i get i get the pra pragmatism of life so I, you know i deal with the real stuff but i'm not just going to like go live over in the news not never and so you never you, you will never, ever meet the same version of me. Not ever. Because I'm growing every day. That's on purpose. That's intentional. So that's why I don't, I don't spend a lot of time, right, in front of the television. I don't spend a lot of time, you know, just idle, whatever. I don't. Now, if I need to numb out and, you know, veg out, if I just need, then I might, I'll click on, on Netflix and that kind of thing um, just to numb, numb my brain because I'm always thinking. But you've got to know what works for you. You've got to know what you need. And for me, sometimes I do need to turn on the television just for white noise, right? Um, I give myself permission to change. You don't, you don't meet the same version of me. I am going to give myself permission to change. I change my mind. I change my opinion. I change my preference. I change my lane. I change my appetite. I change my direction. I give myself permission to change. If it worked, we'll keep doing it. But the second that I discover it's not working, I'm not going to keep doing that. I'm not saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you need to keep doing it. You have all for, have at it. Do what works for you, beloved. But for me, if it's not working, I need to do something different. So I will change in a heartbeat. Yes, I will change. And so... Um, one, one change for me has been like this makeup. I did not start wearing makeup till I turned 60. I'm 60. <laughs> I'm just saying. 
I love it. Like people have been trying to give me wear makeup for years. I just wasn't interested in it. It wasn't something like I was always moving. Like ain't nobody got time for that. Y'all remember that, that lady? Ain't nobody got time for that. Like I didn't have time for that. I wasn't interested in it. It was just, it wasn't something that I wanted, needed, whatever, whatever. But something clicked when I turned 60. I was like, I think I like it. So now I be playing with it. So now I play all the time and I take my time to do what works for me. And I decided, I decided I'm not going to learn the rules because I don't want to be limited by somebody else's rules about what I'm supposed to put on my face. Because guess whose face it is? Mine. I'm just saying. That's a self-love act as well. So when I discover a better, more improved, more efficient way, I make the adjustment. I'm not going to be stuck. I'm not wedded to anything. If that's not the better, more efficient way, then why am I going to keep doing it? Uh, who was it? Who was it? Einstein saying if we keep doing the same thing, expecting different results, that's kind of insanity. I'm not going to keep doing something if it doesn't work. This is made possible because I assess continually. Like I am always assessing and asking myself. So I spend a lot of time. So it's so interesting, very interesting for me. These days, I spend a lot of time alone. Like, I am a community person. I have been living in community, birthed in community, like extended family experience, church family. My church family, we've been together 33 years. I was the first member, okay, 33 years ago. This, this is my family family, I'm just saying. And so, um, and so I've got lots and lots of amazing relationships and friends and, and sisters and, and cousins and you name it. But this is a season of isolation for me, kind of. Like it's been that way for I'm not, maybe a year or so now. So it's is so I spend a lot of time with myself. And that has never been that has never been my reality. It's quite intriguing. Like I'm quite curious about like what Papa is doing with this thing. But you know, but it is working. It's working. So this is a new reality for me, and it is a rich, very, very rich season. So what are we talking about now? So if you just tuned in, I want you to know what we're talking about are some strategies and tools for you loving you well so that you can serve from your overflow so that as you pour love into you, you have an abundance of love, never a deficit to pour out to others because our universe is better when there's more love. So that's what we're talking about. So I'm sharing some of the strategies that I use for me loving me. Um, this is a new reality for me. It's a rich, rich, a very rich season of me seeing me, of me reacquainting with myself, of me knowing me in different and more thorough, abundant ways, a deep knowing. And you know, you know what I discovered more and more each day. I love this girl right here. I'm just saying me. I love me. I love me some her. I really do. I really do. I've discovered that I really do. I mean, really love and deeply appreciate how she shows up in the world. I appreciate how she shows up in the world. And um, I like her. I like how she loves. I like how she strives. I like how she improves. I like how she expects to make mistakes. I expect to make a mistake. I expect that I'm going to drop the ball I expect that something's going to be jacked up. I expect that. That's a part of the human condition. And if I don't expect to make a mistake, I'm going to make myself neurotic and everybody else around me. Let me tell you why. Because if I don't expect to make a mistake, when I make a mistake, I'm going to pretend like I didn't make that mistake. You know anybody like that? If I don't expect to and I expect that I'm going to be perfect, then I'm going to make myself neurotic. And if you work with me, I'm going to make you neurotic too. <laughs> Unless you've got some good, um, some very powerful emotional skills, emotional intelligence where you're not affected by other people's emotions. That's, that's always my goal, right? So I, I love how, how she, talking about myself in the third person, makes mistakes. I love how she learns. I love how she has fun. I really, really, really love her laugh. I really do. I love her laugh. I truly enjoy how she enjoys herself. I so appreciate her for the freedom she gives herself to just be and become more. All of who Papa imagined her to be. All of who Papa imagined her to be. 
I intend to be everything he intended me to be. He intends me to be. I intend to, to live out Papa's imagination for me. Everything he imagined me to be, I'm leaving no stone unturned and everything on the field. Everything. Everything. So when, wherever you see me, I am playing full out. And if I'm shrinking a little bit, call me out. Call me out because I don't want to shrink. I don't, you know, I might have a moment where I forget who I am. I might have a moment where I forget who Papa said that we are, right? The beloved of God, Ecclesia, the called out ones, fearfully and wonderfully made, all of that. How we go not show up as ourselves with that being who Papa Elohim, the creator of the universe, said that we are? I don't really get that. I don't, I really don't get it. Like, how do we not show up full out? When the, the word of God says, right, that he's loved us with an everlasting love, right? It's so many, so many elements of the word that if we embody it, we walk like it and we talk like it and we act like it and we think like it. I'm just saying. And so, beloved, third John says, I wish above all that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Your soul, that with your mind, your will, and your emotions. I nourish my mind well by loving me well. Love wins every time. It can't lose. It's impossible for it to lose. Um, love the person or love the action. It's a win-win, cannot lose. So today, I echo third John. Beloved, I wish above all. Let me, let me slow down at this. This is really what I want to say to you. Beloved, I echo third John. I wish above all that you would prosper, that you would be in good health, even as your soul prospers. That's my wish for you. So prospering means to flourish, to grow luxuriantly. Luxuriantly, like to flourish and grow ex ex exponentially. Such rich growth, I wish for you. And to be in health, a state of physical, mental, and social well-being. Right? A state of physical, mental, and social well-being, not visit there, beloved, not trip over and just, you know, haphazardly get there, but no intentional actions towards well-being. What you think about matters. That's why the word says, think on those things. Lovely, honest, just, and pure. I never get that whole scripture right. <laughs> if it's praiseworthy, think on those things. Because you know how it feels to meditate on the other things. I'm just saying. And soul, right? As our soul prospers, as our mind, what we think on. So our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. So what we think on, our will, what we want, our emotions as we feel. So what you think and what you want, what you feel, it all matters. It all matters. I've come today to invite you to love you so well that people had to ask you, girl, what you take it? Do what you want. Like, what's, what's up with you? I'm just saying. Our self-love mantra tells us that we are irreplaceable, unrepeatable, remarkable miracles with our own special brand of brilliance. We are irreplaceable, unrepeatable, remarkable miracle. You are with your own special brand of brilliance. You are irreplaceable, impossible to replace unrepeatable, not able to be done again, remarkable, uncommon, and extraordinary, and my favorite, you are a miracle, a surprising and welcomed event. You are. If nobody ain't never told you before, I like double negatives, just in case you never heard that. So every show that I'm privileged to host, you will be invited to be in action in two ways. Towards your life's goal, lean into the dream that Papa has for you and to help me add more love into the world. So what commitment do you need to make to fulfill your life's mission? 
What commitment do you need to fulfill? Say it out loud. Go on and say it out loud because look, beloved, I need you to be in action. Don't watch me and get inspired because I know I'm inspirational. So you will get inspired, but you need to do more than be inspired. Don't watch me and just get inspired. So if you only get inspired, you know what? It's only a 40, 41% chance that you're going to be, you're going to do 34% chance that you're going to do something about it. If you create a plan that goes up to 91% and if you share that plan, it goes up to 99%. Make a plan, share it with me at selflove at drkatherineejames.com. Selflove at drkatherineejames.com. I look forward to reading what you're going to do to add more love into the world. Now, how can you help me? Join the self, join the for Lo more love please movement. If you go to Dr. Catherine, more love please the movement. Thank you. Join the movement. Go to drcatherinejames.com. Click on more love please, and you will join the movement. Thirteen dollars a month, one hundred and fifty dollars will support an actual episode of this show, which is joining the helping with the movement. So join the movement. Um, get my books. So self love, we talked about that, but the other book is freedom is our birthright so join me um get the book freedom is our birthright and i would love for you to have that book so it talks about my journey of moving from scarcity to abundant thinking scarcity to abundant thinking and let's see where we are social media thank you freedom is our birthright joy get the book that one or self-love either one of these these are my two solo um, my two solo books. I've got other books that I've partnered in, but these are the two solo books. So I invite you to get those. Join me on my social media every Monday through Friday, 5:40 to 6 a.m. You can catch me live. We can engage together. I love to do that. Um, and I'm on Instagram and all of those kinds of things. So join me there. And of course, join me here every Friday from 11:30 to noon every Friday. Remember the conversations tools and strategies offered on this show is never intended as a substitute for the official mental health practice. If you are in need of service, be sure to seek out a mental health professional. I am one, but I don't act as one when I'm on this show. Dr. Martin Luther King said, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You don't have to know about Plato and Aristotle to serve. You don't have to know Einstein's theory of relativity to serve. You don't have to know the second um, theory of thermodynamics in physics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love and you can be that servant. This has been Dr. Catherine E. James, serving you for the love of it at, doc, at WHPR TV Detroit. Thank you for being with me today, beloved. I love you. You know what? Excellence is what you want. And excellence is what you get. How are you living? What are you giving? If excellence is what you see, then excellent is who you be. you want to be different